It's not only my dreams. My belief is that all these dreams are, are yours as well. It's as simple as that. And I, I make films because I have not learned anything else. And I know I can do it to a certain degree. It is my duty because this uh, might be the, the inner chronicle of what we are. An idea comes and you see it and you hear it and you know it. It comes like on a TV in your mind. You have to have this kind of a reasonable amount of unreasonability to even become a filmmaker. Because reasonability would dictates that like, hey man, you can't, you're not from Los Angeles, you don't work in a movie studio, you're not born in this business, you can't be a filmmaker. That's for other people. You have to have a reasonable degree of unreasonability. You have to be able to be like, no, it doesn't have to be that way. Just enough where like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it from what they say. A lot of time I have young kids coming to me or they write to me, how do I get into films? What film school should I go to? Who can I talk to? Can I be your intern? Can I make you cups of tea? Can I hang around tonight? And the answer to any of that is to me is so simple. To me it's like if you want to make a film, go and make it. Go get a camera and start making the film. That's what you do. What I kind of learned uh, early on is that your voice is as important as anyone else's. Be a director, pick up a camera, shoot something, no matter how small, no matter how cheesy, no matter whether your friends and your sister star in it, put your name on it as director. Now you're a director. Yeah, yeah, stop talking about it and go shoot the f***ing movie. I just figured I couldn't have a fallback plan because I just, I couldn't allow myself to fall back. I had to all or nothing. I had to just keep going on. You gotta be strong, you gotta stick to your guns, and you gotta be patient. It can be very, very intense and very challenging, and you come back and you're exhausted. But I get so much magic and inspiration out of it, and, and we've, it's such a privilege to make a movie. You get to live in a magic world and create magic, so you pay the price. Being unafraid. Being unafraid of what uh, people will say or how they will judge going with your gut. The conflict is within yourself. What I've learned is that the stuff that I got in trouble for, the casting for The Godfather or the flag scene in Patton, was the stuff that was remembered and was considered really the good work. Desiring an idea is like a bait on a hook. Yeah. You can pull them in. And if you catch an idea that you love, that's a beautiful, beautiful day. We don't really feel a pressing popular need. We try to create it. If we didn't love movies, as much as we do, and if we weren't a little crazy on the subject, there wouldn't be any movies at all. But when you have a dream, it doesn't often come at you screaming in your face, this is who you are, this is what you must be for the rest of your life. Sometimes a dream almost whispers. And I've always said to my kids, the hardest thing to listen to, your instincts, your human personal intuition. So you have to, every day of your lives, be ready to hear what whispers in your ear. It very rarely shouts. And if you can listen to the whisper, and if it tickles your heart, and it's something you think you want to do for the rest of your life, then that is going to be what you do for the rest of your life, and we will benefit from everything you do.
Most of the moments I've had as a director have been very difficult for what me. What in particular? Yeah. Well, you know, I just, I just feel that it's, for me, it's very difficult, daunting, anxiety-inducing job. I mean, yeah, there are nice moments, but I had the night before is tough, the morning is tough, standing around acting like you know how you want the blocking to work is tough. It's, I find it to be a very difficult job and it requires a lot of preparation. That's why I, I really admire all these guys who at least make it look very, very easy. It's the shouldering of the entire production and leading the army and inspiring everybody every day. You have to keep inspiring everybody. You want to have a tension tantrum. You want to just say from time to time, like, I fucking had it. But you can't say that because everyone really is counting on you to get them up that hill. And so you always you have to keep forward. So to me, the directing part is the easy part. It's actually just not compromising on your art, but also keeping a disciplined thought in your head is the hardest part. You have to fight for your movie all the way. You know, just from the beginning to the writing to the very last drop, because it never ends. Make your own industry. Don't pay attention to industry. Do your own thing. I mean, put it this way. Um, you want the work to be seen, but it doesn't have to be at the Odeon. You know, no more. That's all different. That's all gone. It's another ancient world. That type of film, or not even that type of film, the, the, the communal experience is always important. You can make a film on a, a, a camera the size of that doorknob and still show it to uh, 1,600 people in an audience. It's still a great communal experience. You never know who the treasure map to the treasure is. So treat everybody really good, and it, it will come back to you. I, I promise you. You know, when a journalist asked me years ago a question I really couldn't answer, you know, they said, what do you what do? You do? Why do you do this? And and I, I don't know where it came from, but I sort of turned to the journalist in a flip, flip kind of way. I, I said, I dream for a living. And, and, and the, it, it, years later, I realized, well, that's exactly what I, I do. I dream for a living. I think self-reliance, everybody's complaining, ah, the industry is so stupid. I do not get the money together. And so I say, roll up your sleeves, work as a bouncer in a sex club, uh, as a warden in a lunatic asylum, half a year. You earn ten, twenty thousand dollars and you can make a feature film today. There's no excuse anymore. And then of course, read, 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 read. If you don't read, you will never make a great film. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to cost uh, uh, over a hundred million. You know, it's all new. You just break it open. It's it changes cinematography, the art of cinematography, but, but you younger ones, you make a new art. Take what's available, push it. Because it's going to go there, you can do anything. And this is the really, really hard truth. The truth is, still, when you're at this place, the cavalry is not coming. How is it possible that the cavalry is not coming anymore? I've done so much. And the good news of this is, who gives a fuck about the cavalry? Because now you are the cavalry. You are the cavalry. And you do not need them.